Watch more programs like this on cable and stream with PCN Select. Subscribe at PCNTV.com. Here, General Lysander Cutler. I am commander of the 2nd Brigade, 1st Corps, 1st Division, Army of the Potomac. I was born in Massachusetts, I moved to Maine. During those times I was a school teacher, I owned a wool company, and I was also Colonel of the Maine Militia. 1856, I moved to a better climate. So I went to Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, it was two years before the war, I was a surveyor for the railroad. I maneuvered around the entire country. The war broke out and they asked how many people in Wisconsin have military experience. Of course, I raised my hand. They put me colonel and had me help form the six Wisconsin volunteers. During that time, the men of my company were all appointed by congressmen, senators, mayors, etc. Did not have a clue about what was going on in military life. What I did is I gave each one of my men and my officers, not the men, the officer men, a test. If these officers passed the test, they would stay where they were. If they did not pass the test, I removed them from position. Of course, no one loved me. Everyone hated me. The officers that I got rid of, I brought in officers that knew what they were doing. Most of them couldn't even speak English. The men resented me. However, the finest corps in United States Army, 6 Wisconsin, part of the Iron Brigade. And I feel that between myself and Meredith, that's what we did. During the early morning of Fredericksburg campaign, we were held at the rear of General Meade's group. We proceeded into the slaughter pen. However, dirt because of fog, because of lousy weather, our activities weren't that much. We laid down in the field, we retreated, left Fredericksburg, have very few casualties. After that, moved up towards Gettysburg, took the long hike up the valley. While in Gettysburg, we camped at Marsh Run, six miles from town. Nice, pleasant place under the shade of oak trees. 3 a.m. that morning, I got word, make all haste to Gettysburg. The Confederate Army is being held off by General Buford. It took us till 10.30 that morning to get to Gettysburg. We got there, the 2nd Brigade were the 1st Infantry on the field. Halfway there, two miles from the town, a little more than halfway, we met General Reynolds. General Reynolds decided he's going to split my brigade. He sent me up, he sent the 84th New York, which is also called the 14th Brooklyn, and he also sent the 95th New York to the batteries off to the left, which were called the main batteries, the batteries from Maine, six guns. The remainder, the 95th New York, 56th Pennsylvania, 147th New York, were deployed to the right of the railroad cut. We had my brigade split in half. The Iron Brigade followed us in, deployed them. Reynolds took personal charge of deploying them to the left of my position. So the Iron Brigade had six corps plus my two to hold off Archer and his people. 
Meanwhile, on the other side of railroad cut, I had my three regiments. My three regiments had to hold off Davis and the rest of the Confederate Army as far as I was concerned. The battle lasted quite a long time. As far as I was concerned, it lasted almost forever. We were pushing and pushing the Confederates to a standstill. Davis came in, Heath came in, roads started coming in from the north. The opposition we had was tremendous. We had orders from Wadsworth to fall back. And the reason I'm saying Wadsworth is because when Reynolds was positioning the Iron Brigade, he was killed in action. General Doubleday took over. Doubleday came back and he commanded everyone. He sent Wadsworth down to tell us to fall back. We fell back to Seminary Ridge. The Iron Brigade was still holding the people in place. Once at Seminary Ridge, the order to fall back was given and 147th New York, which was Colonel Miller, upon receiving the orders, was instantly killed. The 147th New York did not fall back. 95th, 56th, all were moving backwards. Now, the Confederates came in and started to surround him. In the meantime, 6th Wisconsin, which was held in reserve, and the 84th or the 14th, however you want to call them, and the 95th went to their relief and by doing so trapped the entire regiment in the railroad cut, taking thousands of prisoners. I would say thousands might have been long hundreds. After that, we redeployed, moved forward again after Braxton's 2nd Division came up. He was being flanked on the left my 147th Wisconsin came in on the right of them and opened up such a volley that they were standing there and it looked like they were ducking the volleys but actually they were just falling dead. Threw down their muskets and surrendered. Some people say that the first day battle at Gettysburg was the 11th most casualties in the war and my adjutant came to me and he gave me this this is the casualty reports we have from my division my brigade 147th new york went in with 380 men he's telling me there's 207 reported for muster 76 new york had 348 men came back with 196. Same with 56 Pennsylvania. They lost 79 out of 100, 235. All in all, my brigade started off with 2015. I'm going to tell you now that when people say that the cost of holding the high grounds was great, these papers prove that, but we did. After that evening, we went to Cemetery Hill. We relaxed, re ammoed resupplied, rested. That morning at 3 a.m., they sent us up to Culp Hill. That was it for our second day of the battle. 